The customer told them to F off and that he was a disgrace to his company. My husband laughed and told him that he hoped the rest of his day was as pleasant as he was. Ooh, retail burn. What's up everyone and welcome back to MK, the best Reddit readings north of the equator and today we're looking at r slash tales from retail. Being a retail worker myself, I'm ready to relate deeply to these stories. So it's an average weekday morning. I'm in the bag hiding away from the floor working on some repair I don't remember. The phone rings and I pick up and give my usual cheery greeting despite my state as a soulless husk that pines for death. Hello, thank you for calling blank, how may I help you? Yeah, I'm just calling to check up with my repair. I left it with you guys like a week ago and haven't heard anything. Okay, what name is the repair under, sir? Blankety blank and it's a 2014 MacBook Pro 15 inch. Got it. I put him on hold to look through my system and can't find him there. One of my co-workers is sort of dumb and will often misspell customer names. I have found the name Jennifer spelled like Xenifer, so I try common misspellings. Still nothing. Hello, sir. I'm trying to find you in our system, but I'm having trouble. I think your name might have been misspelled. Can you please give me your phone number so I can find you? This is ridiculous, but whatever. Fine, it's 555-555-5555. Thanks. So now he's getting pissy, which is awesome. Love that. I try to find him in our system by phone number and nope, nothing. So I rope my awesome manager in. He says to try and see if we have him in the sales side of the system. Try both name and phone number and nothing. My manager asks what model computer, I tell him we both look for it, nothing. So I put him off hold and say something that causes everything to explode. Sir, we can't seem to find you anywhere in our system, not in sales or service. I also cannot find that exact model in our store. We currently do not have any 15 inch MacBook Pros in for repair. Are you sure you left your unit in with us? This is the town location, right? Yes, sir, it is. Unintelligible yelling, I left it with you people and you lost it? I immediately hand the phone to my awesome manager and he takes over trying to calm the dude down. He yells at my manager for a few more minutes and my manager asks some questions. What does the computer look like? It's covered in stickers which the guy who took it in commented on. Okay, what did the tech who took it in look like? He was tall, red dyed hair, nose ring, and tattoos. Sir, none of our techs here fit that description. More screeching, I swear to god if you don't find my computer I'm gonna call the cops and have you all arrested. So, now I get the idea that maybe he left it at another location or a similar store. I start calling around while he's still yelling at my boss and he's trying to calm him down. I call us to we're friends with. I went to high school with the GM, who often refers customers to us if they can't help them. They answer and ask for the service manager there. Hey, name. Got a weird question. Got a really mean customer by the name of Blank who's calling convinced he left his unit with us, but he can't find it. I know you got tats and a nose hoop, and that's the description he gave us, so... Yeah, I do. <laughs> What's the model and name again? Model and name. He says it should be covered in stickers. Oh yeah, we got it. I actually gave him a call yesterday. Great, thank you. I flag my boss down and tell him I found it and it's at our friend's store. He looks so relieved and tells the customer. The customer's ranting. Sir? Sir, I just got word that we found your unit. About time. Yes sir, it's at friend store and they actually recently gave you a call to ask if you wanted to proceed. Rude. Hangs up. We both looked at each other and just laughed at how stupid and rude he was and I couldn't wait to text my GM friend about the stupid customer that he had incoming. I know that the guy just called me, but it should be over at your guys' place. I don't want to listen to the phone call, I just want to complain. I work at a hardware store that also sells new home appliances. The appliance department is quite successful in sales due to us being the only place in town to buy them, plus we service what we sell. Yesterday I had to man the department as my coworker was at lunch and we were shorthanded as usual. This lady comes back to my desk and asks for help picking out a new dryer. Okay, nothing out of the ordinary. I take her over to the dryers and she says she wants our most basic, least expensive unit. We get over there and the conversation goes as such. CL, cheap lady, me, me. Do you have any other new dryers that are a lot cheaper than that? Again, this new unit here is the most basic, least expensive model we have. Do you have any sales or discounts going on? We don't have any sales going on and we only discount appliances if you buy three or more at once. Or if the unit has cosmetic damage from shipping. We have a used dryer for $249 if you would like. Is it in good shape? How old is it? It has been repaired to working order by our service department and is about 10 years old. I show her the used one, the paint is scratched quite a bit and the white plastic parts are yellowed, but the unit is perfectly functional. Oh, I don't want this. Look at all these scratches in the yellowed plastic. Those imperfections are only cosmetic and in no way affect its functionality. Okay, how much would you charge to deliver to next town over? We deliver up to 120 miles from the store and we charge labor and fuel. Since next town over is 80 miles away, the delivery charge would be $129 extra and we will bring the new one inside and take your old one and scrap it for parts or refurbish it for resale. 
forget it. I didn't think getting a dryer and having it delivered would be this expensive. She leaves the store without buying anything. What do you think it was gonna be, lady? 10 bucks? You're getting a whole new appliance. I worked as a grocery store cashier in the early 90s. Most of my difficult customers were simply confused to senior citizens, Florida, but one heck of a Karen sticks out in memory. Also one Reuterager, but another day for him. We were down the street from a sports center where a number of pros trained. These shopped with no issue until one got himself into big tabloid trouble. He was always great, but the paparazzi were not. While he was shopping, my coworker came back from her smoke break to report Pap outside. Pop got frisky and came in. That was strictly against company policy, but Pop was an ass about it. He wound up screaming assault when our manager wouldn't let him further in the store. I headed back to give Athlete a heads up, offered him to let him leave at the back. He handed over two 20s and said to keep the change. I went shopping for duplicates of his stuff so I could ring it up and not mess up inventory. Also, I had no idea how else to handle getting the money into the store without my register coming up way over. Bad metrics. When I finished ringing it up, a Karen appeared out of the thin air. She wanted to know what I was doing. I explained. She saw me put money into the register and make change. I was legit not sure what to do with it. I couldn't take tips, only baggers, and my manager was still arguing with the pump and waiting for the cops. I set it to the side and turned to Karen to figure out what she wanted as her stuff wasn't on the belt. Karen wanted to know what I was going to do with that money and why it wasn't secured in the register. Was I stealing it? I explained. She demands, give it to me. I was at no on that. I didn't know what I was supposed to do with it, but not give it to Karen. She started having a screaming fit that I was stealing from the store and tried to grab the cash. I snatched it up first and stuffed it in the charity bin, figuring that would end that. Nope. She kept screeching and tried to open the charity bin for her money. Two cops arrived about then and split up between the incidents. Karen's story changed as soon as she saw the cops. Also her demeanor. Suddenly she was super sweet. That was her stuff I just rang up. I wouldn't give it or the change to her. I'd stuffed the change in that bin and she was just trying to get it back. I needed to be fired and arrested. Meanwhile, Karen still had a full cart behind her. I suggested pulling the security tapes. The cops liked that idea. Karen kept smiling sweetly and telling me how I was about to learn what it's like to get fired. I should have given her the money. It would have been no skin off my nose. But now she's going to destroy my life. I had to listen to this crap for quite a while because Pop is screaming First Amendment and it takes time for security tapes to be pulled and reviewed. Sure enough, I can be seen arriving with a basket and money well before Karen shows. She sputtered and insisted both were hers. She was shopping for a friend and I'd been helping her. V pulled more tapes. I was never anywhere near Karen while she was shopping. The cops looked at my manager. Does he want her arrested or escorted out? Our national never liked to approve bans from the store without arrests, so arrest. Karen flipped out screeching that she'd never touch the money or the stuff. She'll sue. Karen and Pop left in cuffs. They got to share the back of the police car. I think they deserved each other. I don't know what charges, if any, stuck for either of them. Security footage and statements were taken. At least it completely ruined both their days and we had their cars towed. You know, I never worked in a, uh, in a grocery store, but I just, I, I work at a gas station right now and the amount of people who will come in and be, you know, th this kind of demanding, I've never had that before. I want to know where these people work to get these horror stories, man. I work at a retail store a few years ago and we had a special sale where customers donate to charity and get a 20% coupon for the whole day. Now, the point of the sale was to give money to local charities. 100% of the money donated went to charity. It was a $5 minimum and the customer receives $5 off their first purchase plus a 20 percent coupon to use all day on anything in the store. So basically the customer is not out on any money. They don't lose money by donating. So in walks this Karen. She comes up to my register and wants to purchase a dress and get the charity coupon. Okay. I will add the $5 donation, you will get that $5 taken off the price, and then I can apply the 20% to your total. No, I don't want to spend $5, I just want the 20%. Oh, you can only get the 20% when you donate $5 to charity, but you get the $5 off your purchase as well as the 20%. But I don't want to give money to charity. Well, that's the whole point of the sale. Well, that's $5 I could spend on myself. You aren't losing $5, you get the $5 off the dress plus the 20%. You get both discounts. Just give me the 20%. I can't do that unless you donate. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Karen refuses to donate, so I sell the dress to her for regular price and she goes on her stupid way. I really don't understand why she was so hostile and refused to donate. I do know why some people are very picky about which charities they give money to, but we had the charities listed at every register and they were all local places and all the money stayed in the local area, so it wasn't like it was going to a CEO's jet or something. For a couple years, I did some occasional work for a family friend. He was part owner of a company that sold merchandise at soccer tournaments. The company had some pretty major contracts and literally 
Naturally would get its inventory directly from the brands, i.e. contact Nike with the product orders and hope they could fill it. This didn't prevent people from thinking we were selling knockoff or overpriced products, which does happen at smaller local tournaments. There we are selling at a boys tournament with about 80 teams from all over the country. The week prior was the girls tournament and with the same number of teams. I typically ran the smaller tent at the smaller venue but would end the night at the main tent if they were still open. It's pretty late, 8 to 9 p.m., usually about the time we start wrapping up, when this dad shows up with a Nike hoodie for us to heat press the event logo onto. The logos are to heat press on the non-event product we carry, but when we start running low on product, we give some leeway. The dad said something along the lines of, I knew those hoodies weren't worth 60 bucks, I got that at the outlet it was only 30. The only things we wouldn't sell at MSRP were event product because those also included the price of being screen printed and even then it was only an extra $5. While going to heat press it, I look at the tag and he was right. He got the hoodie for $30 and it was the same style, except it was a much lower quality material and you didn't even have to touch it to tell because it looked like lower quality material. Regardless, I heat press the logo onto the hoodie, fold it so the logo is facing up, and hand it back to him. He takes the hoodie and leaves thinking he outsmarted us, while a couple of other dads from his son's team apologize for his behavior. My husband works in cell phones. He's a manager. They had a customer come in and buy a new phone and had one of those phone cases with a wallet built into the back where he kept his driver's license slash credit cards, etc. My husband asked his employee who worked with him if she had seen it. She said she distinctly remembered putting it in the bag with his other things. Husband tells customer this, and this is what happened. See customer H husband. Well, your employee is wrong because it's not here. It must have gotten thrown away. We have a very loyal cleaning crew who empties the trash every night, sir. They would have seen it if it had. There's just no way. It has to be there. It can literally not be anywhere else. Well, we have the dumpsters out back, so if it was in the trash, this is where it would be. So how long will it take you to dig in the dumpster to find it? You want me to dumpster dive for a phone case that wasn't thrown away? Yes, this is your responsibility. We share a dumpster with three food establishments and one hair salon. I will not be taking any of my time to dig through that. You can feel free, you know where we're located. The customer told him to F off and that he was a disgrace to his company. My husband laughed and told him that he hoped the rest of his day was as pleasant as he was. Ooh, retail burn. A certain type of bun is on sale. They come in packs of 6 and 12, both are on sale, but only the 6 packs are in the flyer. Frankie old customer, holds up a 12 pack of buns. Do you have any more of these as 6 packs? Me. Unfortunately, we do not. I pause as I sometimes have to stop and think about what I want to say next. To some people, this looks like I finished talking. Ha, what? They're in your flyer. This is false advertising. Blinking as I realize this customer is ridiculous. I could break up a 12 pack for you. Yes, do that. The store I work at uses an icing for cakes that is less sweet than other stores and can be quite popular with people. We don't actually sell it, but my manager is willing to sell it to people who ask nicely or need a whole case at cost. I have a small amount of authority and can do this as well within reason. Do you sell your icing? It's so good and I only need a little. Normally no, but we do on occasion sell cases of it to people. I don't need a full case, I just need a little bit. Deciding I'll be nice. I can sell you one of the bags in the case, but I can't go any lower since these don't have a code or a price in the tills. I get a coworker who just so happens to be carrying a case of ice and give it to me. I open the case and pull out a long bag and give the box back. One bag weighs no more than a pound, but one pound of icing is still a lot. This is one bag. Customer stares at it bug-eyed. But I don't need that much. Can't you sell half of that? No, we can't. These aren't in the system and there's no price on them. The smallest I can go is a bag. How much is a bag? Well, let's see, a full case costs us $50, so one bag would be $25. Customer's eyes go big again. That much? Can't you give it for a better price? I'm sorry, but no, that is the lowest price that we can sell it for. I don't need that much, though. Can't you just sell half of it? Well, is there someone higher up that can override you? I'm sorry, but no. This is literally the price we pay for this. We can't give sell it for less. I don't need that much, though. Can't you just sell half of it? I'm getting a little annoyed. No, we can't. We aren't even supposed to be selling it at all. Isn't there someone higher up that I can talk to that can override you? No, there is no manager who will sell this lower since this is what we pay for it. Then I don't want it then. And the customer walks away. I turn to the coworker who had been eavesdropping close by and give back the bag. Do we look like a charity or something? Coworker laughs and gets back to work. This happened a bit early today, but hopefully worth the share. Smallish family owned hardware store. M, store manager, younger Hispanic guy, 25 or so. O, son of the owner. R, random walk in. Hi, how's it going? I'm looking to speak with the manager. I'm the manager. What can I do for you? Don't lie to me. I asked to speak to the manager. I am the manager. Is there something I can help you with? Yeah, you can get me the manager like I effing asked you to. I am the manager. F you. Just get me the effing manager. I just want to apply for a job. The manager gets O's attention and help. Sir, is there a problem? Yeah. Yeah, I asked M to talk to the manager so I could fill out a job application, but he keeps lying to me. How'd he lie to you, sir? He keeps telling me that he is the manager. He is the manager. So now you're going to lie to me too? F, man, I'm just looking for an effing job. We're not lying to you, sir, but you will need to look elsewhere for a job. What the F does that mean? I just want to fill out an application.
application. We're not interested in your application. You need to leave the store now. Five minutes of arguing between O and R before R leaves. Still not comprehending why he wasn't given a job application. This happened a while ago, but I'm writing about it now because I saw the lady that this story revolves around and once again thanked my lucky stars I got promoted to another position. Back when I was a cashier, I worked really hard to remember all the codes for the produce and other items, especially our store brand water bottle packages, 35 count. Our brand, plus another name brand, had short five digit codes we could input instead of having to scan the entire package. Unfortunately, every other brand we sold didn't have a code, so we had to scan them. In comes cranky lady CL and soon to be embarrassed daughter ED. The lady kind of throws her stuff on the conveyor belt and then zooms by with two packages of water bottles that I need to scan. So I tell her, ma'am, may I scan your water first? She's quick to make a fuss about it and starts complaining about how she's not stealing, what's the big deal? I ignore her, which pisses her off. She keeps whining and complaining and I do my best to keep quiet. Eventually, her daughter tells her, Mom, stop it, you're being annoying. CL says, Oh, am I? Sorry, I get cranky when I don't eat. I quickly finish the transaction and move on. One week later, I'm on the register again and it's slow, so my mind drifts and I remember CL and ED and laugh to myself about the issue. When guess who comes up to my register? If you said CL and ED, you get a gold star. Hey. I kinda stare at her because I can't believe that she's right there when I was just thinking about her and sure enough, she has two packages of water again. This time they're our store brand. I start scanning her items and again she zooms by with the water at the bottom of the cart. Oh, was that two packages or three packages of water? Two. Do you need to scan them? No, it's alright, I have a code here. Oh good, you're smart. Last week I had a dumbass scan them. She thought I was going to run with them. Pretty stupid of her. Uh, I'm in shock. I can't believe her. I kinda stare at her and her daughter goes, Mom, don't start. But her mom goes, what? She was stupid. I smile. Was it the same brand? I ask her. Yep, yeah, I always get this brand, she says. I smile even more. Really? Because I remember it being other name brand and that one doesn't have a code like the store brand does. She looks at me and I can see her recognize me at last. She stays quiet and I see her daughter die a little inside. I finish quickly and wish her a nice day to which she responds, yeah, whatever. It honestly brings a smile to my face remembering this. A few years ago, I worked at a toy store. It's in an area where conservative meets alternative, so it's a mishmash of parenting styles and behaviors from the kids. One interaction that stuck in my mind was a mother who looked like she rubbed the magical bong three times and wished for the greeny genie to teleport her and her beatnik looking kid from Woodstock 69 to the 21st century. Within two seconds of entering, the kid flies to the front counter where keep all the dollar toys, stamps, rubber balls, fidget spinners, slinkies, those kinds of toys. He starts pulling out a pair of wooden aeroplanes from the shelf and begins a pretend dog fight. The mother flips out and I can tell she wants to take the toys off him but is restraining herself. Instead, she just says, octopus, octopus. <laughs> over and over again. It sounded like a command. At first, I assumed she named her kid Octopus. She was alternative after all. However, after she then said the name Snoopy, not real name. I realized the kid's name was not Octopus, but we also didn't have any aquatic animal toys where Snoopy was playing. The mother notices me watching from behind the register and she looks at me apologetically. I'm sorry, he keeps touching the toys when I told him he could look around only. I wasn't mad. Kids are kids and plenty of them go nuts when they enter a toy store. Oh, was he looking for an octopus toy? Snoopy stops playing, just looks up at me and the mother quickly hushes me and gets real close. I'm trying to raise my boy with positive words. The real word is negative, so I'm substituting it for octopus. What real word? She lowers her voice to a whisper. She is panicking that her answer might be overheard and undo five years of parenting and transform herself into a rebel that protects the establishment. 14th letter followed by 15th letter. It took me a bit to realize octopus was used instead of no. This kid is going to have a weird time at the marine section in the zoo. What's happening? It's a huge octopus. And just like that, that brings us to the end of our slash tales from Reed's and this subreddit has a special place in my heart as a fellow retail worker. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, subscribe. And I got a couple things. Tell us what subreddits you'd love to see on the channel, and as well, if you're a fellow retail worker like myself and those featured in this video, how do you like retail? You like it? You hate it? Is it just, you know, money to you? I'll be reading the comments, and as always, I'll be seeing you.